Words of significance, greetings, ladies and gentlemen. This is Sir Twiggy. And today we get a special, 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 a special sneak peek. <laughs> Somehow I can get out words of significance, but I can't say special sneak peek. Explain that one if you can. All right, guys, I actually got in contact with this very cool individual named Tynan Sylvester, who is working on a new game called RimWorld, which if you have not heard about yet, you're missing out. Just putting it out there. Before I even start the stream, I'm going to throw this up. That's the game. It's still on Kickstarter. There's still time left. You can get your mitts on. You can get your mitts upon. Uh, look at these retweets. Look at these peoples. Mr. Baggins. Thank you very much for the retweet. Anthony Roberts. And Ocean Lamonte. At Gamer. Ah, Gamer. Thanks, bud. Who have we got here today? Let me see here. Looks like we have Mr. Bilbo T. Baggins, Spazman, always a pleasure, Sarcastic Gamer, and Gamer himself, thanks for the retweet. Silver Sephiroth, so what studio did Twiggy Rog this time for an early release? <laughs> and Tux. Tynan is Canadian, actually, it's quite cool. Us Canadian brethren must stick together. Oh, thanks for the retweet, Tux. Greatly appreciated. And for the follow. Mr. Game. <laughs> I like a good rim, says Stellub. Welcome, bud. Good to see you. Is Jamarina here? Why did someone say Jamarina? Jamarina. Did I not see her? Where is she? She is there. Hi, Jam. I'm excited to try this thing. This pre-alpha of RimWorld. So those of you who haven't seen it yet, it is amazing looking. He's got lots of good ideas. I am pumped. I think I might leave the music on. Because uh, I don't think the game has much music of its own right now. So I'm just going to put it down really, really low. Extraordinarily low. Is that low enough? Too low? Would you like more lowness? Or are you down with lowness? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Wax Steven. That's fucking hilarious. I like that. It is a funny name. But it makes sense, because it's like a rim world. A world with, uh. on the edge. But yeah. Since I left, everyone became quiet. Oh, yeah, how did PG go last night? But you did make tasty soup. That is the main thing. That is the main and most important thing. <laughs> Alright. I know you're all... excited to see RimWorld. So I'll get right into it. I know I'm excited to play it. It's fucking really goddamn fun. Bam. Rimworld. So, where's the best place to start? Not a whole lot in the options yet. There's a lot under the hood, I'll tell you that much. Well, let's start here with the AI storytellers. So as you can see, we got four AI storytellers here to start with. So the whole idea of the game, let's start there, actually. You're in a ship. Ship goes to shit. You crash. There you go. RimWorld. Survive and thrive. Exactly my kind of game. So, at the beginning here, you see you get to choose your storyteller. So I'm going to start with Cassandra Classic just to give you guys an idea of an easy in curve. Then there's tough Cassandra Classic, which is a less forgiving cousin. Phoebe Friendly, who's going to be like a super friendly AI like director. And then there's Randy Random, who's a particular favorite of mine. And we will do multiple runs with him because he's fucking hilarious. So these are all AI directors. So at the at beginning of the game, you're choosing. Do I want to have a nice easy curve in? Would I like a bit steeper of a curve? Do I just want total fucking randomness? Which is usually fun. I, I'm a fan of the random. 
But just to get started, let's go ahead and do Cassandra Classic. Just to give you guys an idea of the game, so I don't die in like the first five minutes. It is a difficult game, I won't lie. I've seen screenshots and stuff and other people playing it who have had like 20-something people in their community. Like, that is amazing. I've managed to get up to five once, and then raiders came and killed everyone and set my base on fire, and then they left. They didn't even use the base, they just set it on fire and left. Assholes. It's like, if you don't want the base, why come kill my people and set the base on fire? Anyway, here's where we get into a bit more of RNG, random number generation. So you got to choose three members to start with that have fairly balanced stats according to what you want. So as you can see here, I got a scientist who's 34 years old. He started off as an herb world urchin. He became a navy scientist. He has two traits, which are shortest tension span and hand fisted. I believe hand fisted helps for hand to hand. Gives you like a bonus. I'm gonna move this thing out of my way. There we go. AI Storytale is good. I meant to review your situation and throw your changes to your gameplay and make your story interesting. Yeah. So, like, the first one there, Classic Cassandra, is just a slow progression. You'll have, like, maybe an eclipse, and then maybe one raider will show up, and there'll be some ships that crash nearby. And then, you know, seven or eight days into your in game time, then you'll get your first um, huge raider hit, where you get, like, four or five of them. Because it takes, they give you that time to prepare. Whereas with Randy Random, it could be day one and you have five raiders come and kill you. Yep. You have no idea what this game is. Yeah, it's brand spanking new. It's still pre-alpha. I just started playing it last night to try and get a little bit of a feel for it before I started streaming it. So basically what we're looking for is to have three people who balance it well. So to start, this guy ain't so good. I mean, 11 research is good for a scientist, but I'd like to have at least 15 if I'm going to have a scientist. Oaf, he's really good at farming. He's pretty good at fighting. He's absolutely useless at social interaction. Construction and research, not so good. That's not actually too bad for two sevens and 11. And a six in mining, too. So he's actually pretty useful. So we can put him to use in the fields and as a defender and as a miner. So I might actually keep that Oaf. That's not bad for an Oaf. Zero social, of course, so we'll need one person with good social skills. Give them cool names. I will, I will. But I have to adjust their stats first so I know who's going to be what. You know what I mean? So here we have a 17-year-old commissar. This gives him a plus three to shooting. Other than that, not that good. 15 research and threes across the rest of the board. That's not bad. A 15 research is good. Figured out what game this is. The title finally decided to show up. Hey, Nicole! Good to see you! Man, all these people showing up. I'm not even noticing. Silver Sephiroth, I believe I said hey to you. Gamer, I said hey. Nicole, hello. Sarcastic Gamer, I believe I said hey. You're 17 today? Grats, dude. Happy birthday. Bonafet à toi. Now, I am going to need a good researcher. Hey, crazy girl. Good to see you. Welcome to the stream. Seventeen is when shit gets real. <laughs> I'm tempted to keep this guy just because he's going to research at 225% of max speed, which is amazing. And he's got threes across the rest, so it's not bad. So what I really need now is someone with good social. Good social and good construction, because my best construction is a three right now. Well, there we go! I don't even have to re-roll this guy. He's got a 3 in social. Not really good. 12 in mining, 8 in construction. Hmm. Just playing Prison Architect and watching a stream on my other monitor? Cool. Thanks. I appreciate it. I appreciate it when you guys just come and hang out or listen to my voice. My beautiful voice. No, not really. <laughs> I'm just making shit up now. What do you guys think? Should I stick with this guy? Eight construction's good, but the three in social is going to be a big negative because we're going to need social skills for trading with passing ships. Trading with passing ships and for convincing people to join our cause when we imprison them. Hmm. Wear your leg hair with pride. We're talking about late bloomers, are we?
I don't know, I'm torn. Three social's kind of low, but 12 and 8 is hard to turn away from. I'm going to have to stay with it. So we got our oaf. The oaf is a human colonist female, age 66. She's going to be mainly into gardening and fighting. <laughs> Clearly, it's female. That's Jam. I don't want to insult her, though. She's age 66. And Jam is clearly, clearly 21 at heart. I suppose I could do Jam for you. She won't mind. Jam Borina. I'm half of 66. <laughs> it's a sign. It's meant to be you. With your magical growing skills and your hand-to-hand -hand combat. You don't take shit from no one, Jamarina. Then we have Guzman, the scientist. He's a male human colonist at age 63 with a name like Guzman that has to be Spazman. And finally we have our miner, who was once a slave, but turned his life around and became a deep space miner. He has fashion knowledge, and he's a city slicker. What about this guy? <laughs> You're a compulsive thief, Spazman! What are we gonna, are we gonna name our miner? <laughs> Got you picked! Walter White? I think I'll do Walter. I can do Walter. Can't do the last name is the only thing, so it'll be Walter Miner. I feel informs and so like a mofo. <laughs> I think this is good. I think this is a good start. Our lowest stat is going to be our social stat, which is going to make it a bit harder for trading and uh, turning people to our will. Let's do this. The three of you awake in your long sleep sarcophagi to the sound of sirens and ripping metal. You barely get to the escape pods before the ship is torn apart. A few hours later, you land on this unknown rim world. As pieces of the shredded ship fall around you, you start making plans to survive. Okay, I'm going to pause right off the bat here, guys, before they even hit the ground. I'm going to show you a couple things I like to do. So, well, let's have a look at the map first and all the little ins and outs. This is the map. This is the extent of map for right now. As you can see, it does go this far in, but I got a very large uh, stone segment here. You can mine into this, obviously, and look for minerals and good stuffs. This here is a dumping area. This is a stockpile area. And these are my three little unowned beds. They're not really beds, they're just sleeping spots. They're not even proper beds. <laughs> Prison space, space attacked. Now this is very important. This is a geothermal spot. It's like a steam geyser. It will be very, very useful if we can build there. I'm going to die. I can tell you already. I can look at the map and tell like how defensible it is. And this is not my most defensible map yet. Especially if I want to drop a geothermal generator on there. I have to build in this area to defend it with turrets. Get that diamond! <laughs> yeah, there's going to be a lot of screwing up. Um, the easiest thing would be to drop a geothermal right there. But it's going to be hard to defend because I have to defend from the south and the north. They could come from either way. They could circle around in behind me. I'm going to have to make huge walls. Mm -hmm. Alright, so this is how we're going to start. Well, first I'll let you see the intro. I like this. This is kind of like space cowboy music. I like it. It's appropriate for this. There's our little man. And woman. There's Spaz, man. That skinny little thing. So what we need to do first is acquire food, obviously. We only have 50 unrefined foodstuffs for our three peoples to eat.